Hello everyone. It's Bertie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. I cannot believe I'm about right here. I need to draw a line. You guys, anybody who watches me has figured out that I am not your nor average Joe. I have moved my art room around yet again. I know this is probably the eighth time this year. But my setup with my tripod is coming in at a different angle so it doesn't reach where I need for it to on my table. So my tripod ends about right here. Tripod. It's the it's the TIFF Southern Gals design deal where it comes up behind your table and over PVC pipe and you put your phone on it. Well, it ends about right here coming in from this way. So I have a little case over here and I went and got my big heavy duty construction level, my three foot one, and I have it stretched from my PVC pipe stand over to my little box case that I keep papers in. And there's a big hole in it about right here that I've got the visual finder of my phone pointing through and I've laid my phone on top of it and this is as good as I'm going to get. So I cannot let my books get any farther down here or you won't see them. Anyway, you know that's how I roll. Nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. I'm telling you. But I'm going to talk with my glass half full today. So I won't I will not be a negative Nancy, okay? Not going to do it. Had a couple mini journals that I was putting together and I thought, you know what? I need the therapy. So I'm going to talk while I'm putting my, uh, binding my books and you can hang out with me. I'm just telling you, this is going to be boring. It's just binding a couple little books and gabbins. So if you need something more than that, flick on past and keep, keep searching. Okay. Cause that's all I've got today. This one here, I love, 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 love. I hope I can get rid of it. I'm not sure I can. I had this old t-shirt in the house, my husband's old t-shirt, and I was slow stitching on it at night while he was, we were watching TV. And uh, I decided, oh my gosh, wouldn't that make a cute little journal cover? So, so I brought it out and sure enough, my little small journal fits right inside of it. And I love the way this rip is right here. So I'm going to attempt to figure out somehow that this can be my closure, you know, to tie it. And I don't know, cut this shorter. I don't know. So let's just get it um, bound and then we'll see where we can go from there. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well. I... I'm getting ready for a craft show. Remember the craft shows back in the day? Well, I'm getting ready for a craft show. So I have been making little snowmen, snow women, out of uh, salt and pepper shakers. And I just decided I needed something different last night. So I decided to come out and see if I could get this cover oriented and was going to just sit down and do something for myself, you know, paint, but decided that this needed to get done, so I might as well gab while I do it. And, and then I'll paint maybe on my next one. I just don't know how you girls whip your... It appears to me out here in YouTube land, it appears that you really put your journals together fast for your little Etsy shops. And I just can't do it that fast. I don't know why. So I really felt like I needed to get some together. I just have recently sold my two large ones. Praise God. One of them went to my friend Kimla in California, who I think has bought all of my large ones up to date. A matter of fact, 
Kim Law was my very first reason I made a large journal because I started making junk journals and she she messaged me and said my she thought my journals looked great but had I ever thought about um, doing a larger one so I said I'll sure attempt it and I did and the rest is history Kim Ma has been my fantastic supporter of large journals Kim Ma if you're out there I wish you would send me pictures of one that you finished so I can see what they look like when they're done I've made a new friend Carol if you're watching right here in my own town I have a friend named Carol who watches my videos my new friend Carol she said oh my gosh I live in your this your city so I went over to her house and met her and we have bonded and she and I gave her one of my journals and she went ahead and did her thing to it and it's adorable she showed it to me last time I was over at her house and I cannot tell you what joy that brought me it looked like a completely different journal you know I'm just putting this naked journal together and I'm thinking when I send it out is it worthy but when you guys put your own art to it it becomes fantastic so I was so excited to see one done thank you Carol and uh, so yeah it makes it encourages me to know that I'm doing it right to just keep doing it how I want to do you know how I enjoy doing it and and you guys will turn it into what you want it to be after you get it so what has ever been everybody been doing listen guys girls people what in the Dickens was I thinking one day when I was at a town in a town about 30 miles away from me or more with a friend who was here visiting at a junk shop at an ant I don't want to call it a junk shop I'll call it an antique shop and I got some crazy wild hair to rent an antique booth thinking oh my gosh I bet I could sell my junk journals in here uh no people have no clue what they are I can tell they look at them they're they're opened and moved on the shelves and stuff but not a cl I even wrote descriptions on them what you do with them you know what kind of what the definition of a junk journal is and I put, a, you know, I only rented a bookshelf. So I put some, um, you know, antique stuff that I had. Not much around. Because I, I don't know if I've been doing my drunk journals long enough to, that you know that I do free tables. If I have stuff I want to get rid of. And if I have enough to put on a table, I don't take it to the Goodwill. I go out in my yard and set up a table along the road. I live in the country. And I put free on it. And by night, everything is gone. And I so enjoy having my free table. Well, so I don't have a whole lot of stuff to put in, a, in an antique mall. So I rented this bookshelf. And I went up yesterday. I've had it since the week... The, uh, last week in October and not a thing has sold off of it and I'm just like what was I thinking I have to come up here 30 miles to check on it and restock it in which I have nothing to restock I'm gonna have to go shopping at garage sales or estate sales just to restock my booth no 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 so I told her yesterday I didn't want to keep it and danged if the little lady isn't a car salesman and talked me into staying a little longer <sighs> so yeah I'm still there 
and uh, I don't want, I honest to God, don't know what possessed me to rent it. I just honestly have no clue what got in me to do it. So I've got to get out of that. I love doing the Etsy. It is doing okay for me. Um, honestly, I don't understand my, you know, I'm, I'm odd and my brain works in a different way, but they're trying right now to get us to do free shipping. So in my brain, this does not make sense. But I guess in a lot of people's brains, this is how subliminally other people think. To me, if you have a $50 journal and you spend $10 on shipping and you put in there shipping $10, what is the difference when you do free shipping and then charge $60 for the journal and free shipping? It's the same price. What about that is going to make you, what about seeing free shipping, but you're still paying the same price for the journal? What does that make you want the journal more for? Because I don't, I just don't understand that. So I'm not going to mess with the free shipping. I'm just going to keep charging you know, the shipping, because it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense. Also, my friend says I need to fancy up my descriptions. Well, I see that when I'm on, uh, I see that when I'm on Instagram. I see how People fancy their sayings for their journal and make it look all, you know, I see that on Instagram, okay? When they post a picture of their item to show people, they've got seashells sitting around it, or it's on a fancy lace tablecloth, or, you know, they're dolling it up to make it look special in the picture on Instagram. And then they describe it with these fancy schmancy words. And somehow in our subliminal thinking, it actually makes us want it more. And I don't understand that either. I'm just telling you, my art journal is going to look... I'm not going to doll it up to show you what it looks like. Because I don't want you to get it home in the mail and go, oh... This isn't as pretty as it looked in the picture. I want you to know my journals are what they are. If you like them, wonderful. If you don't, wonderful. I just want you to see the real deal. You know what I mean? I don't understand that part of it either. That people want to buy something if it's all set up fancy schmancy. They want to buy it more. I don't understand our brains, I guess. Because my brain doesn't work like that. My brain is not turned on by those. Because honestly, I notice it. I notice the marketing part of it. And, and I don't. It doesn't change my mind. Anyway, just something I'm not quite understanding. But I'm not really into, you know, I want to make extra money for my household since I'm physically not able to work, but I'm not willing to do all of the marketing ploys to sell myself because honestly, the main reason I'm doing this because I can't work, I need the therapy and that's the main reason I'm doing all this is for the therapy. So, does that make sense? One, two, three. Yeah, that's what I do. I also am noticing, I, I, I need for 
maybe somebody to message me and tell me a different keyword that I need to look up. I have deleted a lot of my subscriptions that I'm following because I'm realizing that I do do this for the therapy. I even watch videos for therapy. I want to hear somebody else talking. I want to hear the struggles they go through, you know, fixing up their art room. I want to hear what's going on with them. I, I That's part of my the therapy that I'm, I'm searching for. So I got rid of a lot of my videos, subscriptions that, number one, they don't talk during their video because I can't tell you how many times watching a video that's just set to music that I have fallen asleep watching. Um, it's just the music puts you to sleep and doesn't allow me anyway to concentrate on what I'm watching. So, or it's very hard for my brain to follow somebody who's doing a video that types in what they're wanting to say and you have to try to read it and watch them do their art all at the same time. You're trying to read their subtitles and watch them paint. I can't, it's, can't do it. I can't do it. I need to hear somebody talk. And, and then I start judging people, which is still my issue, why I need the therapy. I start saying, okay, so you're making art journals and you have your big clunky huge costume jewelry diamond ring on and your white cashmere sweater and you're painting and you're trying to tell me this is what you do with your fake fingernails? Do people do this? Do you actually go out into your art room and get messy with your white cashmere sweater on? Or is this just some way that you're wanting to look pretty for your video? Look, people, <laughs> this is how I work in my art room. So, I need to know some keywords because to find the people that I want to watch that talk and that, uh, that get messy like I do and that are going through the same things I am, what keywords would I look up? Would I look up art, ther art journal therapy? Would I put therapy in there? I don't know what kind of keywords to look for. So if you have any ideas or somebody who does talk and doesn't put subtitles and doesn't, number one, fast forward, because I like to art journal with them. When I'm watching somebody on a video, I like to art journal with them. And when they're doing it in fast forward, it just makes my brain crazy. It's just too fast. And I, I want to do it in real time. I don't care if it takes you 30 minutes or an hour. I want to watch it and do it with you. And listen to you. And, you know, become, get a, a, attached to you. Like, be virtual friends. Okay, look at that. Is that not adorable? So now, what do I do? What do I do? I like the way I've tied this. Do I just, like, tie a bead on here? A big wooden bead. Let me get a big wooden bead and just slide it on there and see what happens. Okay, I found a whole bunch of wonderful large beads in my bead collection, but they didn't have holes in them, so I had to drill my own hole. So we'll see if I can get my t-shirt poked through the hole. What can I use? except for my trusty paint brush. There we go. To get that through the hole. Um, I had a friend. I met a friend. She is actually an acquaintance of another friend of mine who I have seen and ran across, but we never really visited. She's a friend of another friend of mine. Did I say that? So I saw her at the Dollar Tree in my town one day and we got to talking and I didn't know she was artsy fartsy 
and uh, oh, I must have got myself with the drill. And um, so I told her she should come out and play with me one day. She didn't know I had an art room. And so time went on and we didn't communicate anymore. And then I saw her again in the art de department of Walmart. And she said, I still really want to come out to your house. And I said, well, let's put it in the books right now, you know, so that we don't forget about it again. And um, so we did. And she came over the day before yesterday and played with me. Look at that, you guys. I'm so excited. I am so excited. And so we had so much fun. We just had an art therapy time. We learned that we are so much alike, and oh my gosh, she did her thing, I did my thing, and we just visited, and we spent the whole day together, and it, I just had a blast. So, Christina, if you're out there and have found my videos, thank you for coming over. I can't wait till we do it again. And then that night, I'm not going to bead these right now. Normally, when I sell them, I'll bead, there's six strings here, and I'll bead about three just to give some people some inspiration and whoever buys it can bead the other ones or cut them off or do whatever they want. So that one's done. Anyway, then that night, uh, another friend of mine called and said, hey, I need, I need to come out and paint. I just want to come out. My kids are at youth group and I would just like to come out and paint. And I said, sure, come on. So I had like a double whammy day. What did I make? What is, what is this? Oh, it's a pocket that's going this way. Okay. So, yeah, I had a great day the other day. was exhausted yesterday because of my issues, but it was totally worth it because I love being with people. Okay, where would this, where would I have had this? Maybe I had that stuck in there. Okay. So yeah, that's what it's all about to me. I love sharing my space. I tell people when they come, whatever I have you can use. Just wander around and find what you need and make yourself at home because Lord knows I've got an abundance of stuff here and I just have a blast. I would love to do, I would love to do art journal classes. I would love to open up my sh shop and my art uh, art studio, we'll call it, and have people come and do journal classes here. I would love to teach journaling by fives if Shannon Green didn't mind, and I'm sure she doesn't. Because journaling by fives is what really, for the first time, opened me up and got me out of my head. Y'all know that. I've probably said it a hundred times. I forget what I say on all these videos and say it again, so please forgive me. But yeah, wouldn't it be fun just to have five or six women at a time sitting here visiting and sharing and drinking coffee and, and art journaling together. But nobody around here, uh, Carol in my town is the only one that I have found out here close to me that even does art journaling. Gotta go to the East Coast or the West Coast to find anybody. Which would be a dream of mine. Would totally be a dream of mine to go down to wherever Val loves to create lives and when she gets together with her, she and two other friends get together and do fun things. Oh my gosh, it'd be so it would be a dream to be able to go down and hang with those girls one day. Would be a dream. Anyway, I just wish I lived around people like that, that I could hang with and play with. I have to pay attention because I get to gabbing and don't notice whether my signature is right side up or not. You know, with your cover. And very easy to get it flipped upside down and then you've got the whole darn thing sewn in and realize it's upside down and you gotta go 
take it all back out. Oh my gosh, how many times have I done that? I cannot even count. So I have, and then when I get to gab and I'm out of my mind and I don't pay attention to what I'm doing, so. Note to people, note to yourselves, don't do that. And, but I really don't think y'all probably have the gift of gab that I do, so you probably don't worry about that. Right? And remember, I'm not here to teach you because Lord knows I do my own thing and it might not be your way, might not be the correct way. So look up one of those thousands of videos out there that teach you how to sew in a signature and go by that. Not my how I do it. Because I, first of all, I sew my signature together first just out of laziness. See, I sew mine together because these girls trying to put all these together and hold them in place while they, while they, you know, sew them in their journal. No, can't do that. I don't have the patience for that. So I go ahead and sew it together first. And also like this one, well, some of them, I kind of want to sew the signatures in to like a piece of material first and then glue it in. Sometimes I don't want the threads to show, but these I'm just, I don't care. It's just happening. That's just how it's happening. One, two, three. That is one thing I do follow. They say do it three times the Three times the width is how long you should do your string when you're doing the three hole, whatever this is called. So I do follow that rule. But the rest of them, I don't even know if I'm doing it right or not. Sometimes I'm in the mood to tie it in the middle. And re lately I've been in the mood to tie them at the bottom. So it's just all a matter of what you want to do. Some people make their strings on the outside, so they start out here with them, so they tie them from the outside. I don't know why I don't. I just go to the inside. I don't know. No rhyme or reason. That's just how it happens with me. See, look at us. We have gotten a book, two books bound, and I've got some pressure relief from my gab meter. So this has been a productive day. And then I'll probably, I'm supposed to be getting a call from a nurse with, I missed her call yesterday for lab results. And my phone will not ring if I'm videotaping. So you watch. She'll call while I'm doing my video today, and I will have missed her again. That's just the way it rolls. So we'll play phone tag. Why these people can't leave your results on your message, on your answering machine message, I don't know. But it sure would make life easier for me with the phone tag thing. Show would, show would. So I will probably do my own art journal and video it after this. I don't know. Might not have nothing to talk about. Can you imagine? I might have already talked about it. And I don't think I kept things positive. I griped about how people aren't doing what I'm searching for in their videos. <laughs> Well, they're doing something right, folks, because they have like million, bajillion followers at their fast-forward, music-only, silent videos. So, <laughs> they're doing something right for somebody. 
I'm just looking for something different right now, I guess. And I'll find it. There's somebody out there. Tiff, she still, she still does them real time, except for, I think, she she's getting to where she videos them and then goes back over and talks voiceover or whatever. I'll take it. As long as I'm hearing her voice, I'll take it. And some of them think they can't have more than a five-minute video. I don't know why. I'd sure watch a longer video. Now, I know these girls that do, like... Did I not punch that one yet? These girls that do the one- or two-hour ones are a little upset, excessive for me. But that's okay. Other people who are homebound and... They just do it for entertainment and watch them, so that's okay for them, too. I'm just looking for some visiting. Talking and, and art and getting your fingers messy. And I know there's somebody out there. I just have to put in the right keyword to find them. I have enjoyed that Fran, I think it's Francie Papillon or whatever. I enjoy her. She, uh, she sometimes really encourages me. She definitely actually does art therapy, I think, in her work. I mean, you know, in her videos, I really enjoy those sometimes, but... She is not as grungy as I am. So, but it doesn't matter. You can still art along with them and your grunginess or whatever your personality is comes out. It doesn't turn out just like what they're doing. You always end up putting your own spin on it. There we go. Guys, girls, people. There's my second little book. This here was a page that I made just to put in a signature and my friend Terrell said, oh my gosh, that would make a cute little cover. So I just lined the back of it with material and I had already had pockets built in it, but that's okay. We got a pocket on the outside and I just put some eco dyed material on the inside to stabilize it and here we go. We got a little I don't know. I don't, I really don't want to close this one. I might just put a little button on this and put a little material on from the back side to come around. Let's see if there's anything here. I think that's probably these. That's not even a. Is that a button? No, that's not even a button. That'll go on a memory jug. That one or this one, but I think the green one would be a little bigger. Well, that's a frou-frou little diamond there. You think the little... I don't know if a piece of material would stay around that or not. It's awful beveled. Always go with your first one. It always... You do a lot of searching, and it's usually the first one you go back to, so... I'm just going to go with the first one for my little tie. Let's see if I can get this off. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use my wax linen for that. I don't know what this, yeah, it's called wax linen. I got it at an estate sale clean out. And I have just used the tar out of this stuff. And it has just lasted me forever. I'm going to go in through the top. I'm feeling grungy enough that I'm going to go in through the top and tie it on the outside of the button at the top. I have no reason, no rhyme or reason. That's just what I'm in the mood to do. And I'm just going to do it one time. Just going to do it one time and tie it. And I'm going to leave a little gap. I'm not going to tie it tight because I want my little material to 
you know, that I'm going to use to wrap it closed. I want it to be able to go underneath it. So I'm not going to do it super tight. I'm going to do it loose like that. Then my material can go under. And I'm I'm feeling grungy, so I'm going to leave it, you know, the tails hanging. So there's that. I'm going to put you on pause and get some kind of material. Whoops, bounce you around. Okay. I found me a little piece of material that we'll use for our closure. And I think what I'm going to do is poke a hole in it. And I'm just going to run it through there. I need something to poke in there. I'm just going to run it in there and I'm going to tie it a couple knots. And that way, okay, so then we'll just pull it around. And wrap it around. And voila, we just did a closure. So, thank you for hanging with me. I got something done. Two books. I got finished, and thank you for inspiring me to do that and motivating me. And I hope y'all are doing great. I hope y'all are safe. And until we meet again, bye-bye from Birdie.